So, um, yeah, I think the, the very last thing that that I read, and maybe you could, but when, when you go back and, and do, do your research, uh, uh, I think it's in Genesis when, when uh, the Lord is telling Abraham to, uh, to make a couple. Yeah. It was not just Abraham, but his whole entire household. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess when I come back, I'll, I'll pull up that scripture. Yeah, for sure. But from that whole household uh, that made that covenant, um, well, all nations would be blessed through him and stuff like this. That you're trying to say? Not, not just that. But if you, if you go back and you and you go read that that, that covenant word. Uh, it, it's there, yes, that, that's mm -hmm. there. But the, the covenant of now Abraham cir like circumcising, he, he, so he didn't just, you know, it was Abraham was circumcised, um, Isaac, but also Ishmael was circumcised, right. and, and, and his slaves were circumcised as right, well. Right. So uh, maybe when, we, when I come back, we can talk about uh, just what what does that mean as well? Yeah, because sure, sure. There was, there was people who one quote unquote Jews that were getting circumcised that were right. being grafted in exactly. to this whole this, this, this household. But uh, hey man, I'm here. Yeah for sure. All right, my boy Pleasure. Yeah for sure. Take no. care, man. You got a uh you got YouTube or Instagram or something like that? Uh I don't really have social media but I, I got YouTube I can follow yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I sure. can follow you on YouTube. I I don't have my own YouTube. This is just stuff from my understanding. Yeah right. Okay, what, what's your YouTube? All right, this is it right here. Okay, I got you. Yeah, for sure. I, I appreciate it. All right, y'all about here pretty much, you know, uh, every Friday, every go around this time. Okay, go. Going back to uh, you know what we initially was talking about and whatnot, you know uh, how you know Jacob's trouble was ultimately you know the only remedy and whatnot, right? You know, so uh, so like it. I forgot what we left off at, but um, I believe it was at um. Second Andrews chapter nine and verse thirteen. All right, and it says, "And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is, and for whom the world was created." All right, you know, so this world, you know, is ultimately created, you know, for the the elect's sake. All right. Verse 14, then answered I and said, verse 15, I have said before and now do speak and will speak and also hereafter that there should be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. All right. So, hey, going back uh, to what I was saying, you know, earlier, you know, the vast majority of our people, you know, they don't want to listen to the word. They don't want to take heed to the word. So guess what? You know, Jacob's trouble is ultimately going to be the only remedy for these people, all right? You know, they're gonna have to suffer great and terrible things, all right? You know, verse, uh, verse 16, like as a wave is greater than a drop. Verse 17, and he answered me saying, like as the field, so is the sea, and the flowers be, su and the flowers be, such are the color also, such as the workman is, such also is the work, and as the husband himself is, is himself, so is his husbandry. Also, for it was the time of the world. Verse 18. And now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell that now live, no man spake against me. Alright, verse 19. And says, For then everyone obeyed 
but now the manners of them which are created in this, in this world that is made are corrupted by perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable and read themselves, all right? You know, hey, when you look around at our people, you know, they're extremely corrupt, all right? The people that's in the society, this world that we're living in right now, all right? You know, they're extremely corrupt. That's why the Lord, you know, he's getting ready to bring great judgment upon this place, all right? Verse, um, verse 19. Salaki, I think, uh, Verse 19, it says, For then everyone obeyed, but now the manners of them. No, I was in verse 20, so like it. Got thrown off a little bit. Verse 20, it says, So I considered the world, and behold, there was pearl because of the devices that were coming to it. Verse 21, And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster, and a plant of a great people. All right? You know, so hey, in these last days, ultimately, you know, Yahweh Shai has a, a, a great cluster that he's reserving, all right, which is the elect, you know, but everybody outside of that, you know, is getting ready to perish, all right, getting ready to be destroyed, all right? Verse 22, all right, it says, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept in my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect, all right? So, and that great, you know, that's dealing with the elect. But those that's outside of that, you know, the scripture just says, said, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, all right? You know, you Israelites that don't want to repent, you know, you want to continue to be degenerate, all right? So on and so forth. You know, you want to continue to be uh, niggas and hoes and all that. Hey, you know, you're going to have to perish in these last days by various ways, you know, whether it be famine, you know, uh, pestilence, so on and so forth, all right? So this is first Corinthians chapter six and verse nine, and it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall inherit, shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Bashinal Shai. Be deceived, neither fornicators, all right, you know, damn alphabet people, you know, the list, list goes on. All right. You know, man that want to commit adultery with another man's wife, all right. These are the people that's gonna be destroyed in these last days. All right. Let's continue. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers nor effeminate, nor abuses of themselves with mankind, all right? The Lord ain't dealing with alphabet people, all right? You know, so these type of people, they're not gonna inherit the kingdom that's coming, all right? Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Shem all right? So that's why it's important to repent, you know? Because if not, hey, you're gonna have to be destroyed, all right? You're going to find yourself being one of these two thirds out here in these last days, all right? Verse uh, 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Yahweh and by the Spirit of our power, all right? You know, and before we came into this truth, you know, a lot of us, you know, we were, uh, you know, doing these type of things that was listed, all right? You know, but now that we have came into this truth, repented, you know, we're watched, all right? You know? So to you Israelites, you gotta be watched as well if you wanna inherit the kingdom. You gotta put off that old man, all right? You know? Let me see if I can get that. So this is Ephesians chapter four. And let's start at verse Let's start at verse 22. And it says, that ye put off the so like, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, all right, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. All right. You know, so we come to this truth, you know, you have to put off that old man, all right? You know, because if not, hey, you're gonna be destroyed. You know. Let's continue. Um verse 23 and it says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind all right you know you have to change completely all right you have to change your way of thinking all right 
You know, you can no longer do the same things that you was doing in the world, right? You know, doing the things in the world that's gonna get you destroyed, all right? You know, doing these things that was listed in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter six, all right? You know, you have to put off those old things, all right? So this is Luke chapter 21. In uh, verse 34, and it says, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with your fitting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that that day come upon you unawares. All right? You know? So, hey, you're supposed to be paying attention, you know, to the times. All right? Not being caught up in the things of this world. You know, because if you are, you know, the day of the Lord, you know, is going to come upon you unawares. All right, the scriptures tell you that the day the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. All right? Verse 35. For, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye, be, be, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. All right? You know, so we're in those times where Yahweh Shah is getting ready to visit the earth all right you know so we're supposed to be praying and watching you know that we'll be accounted worthy to escape these things that shall come upon the earth you know and to stand before the son of man all right you know because Yahweh Shah, he's not coming with hugs and kisses you know rainbows and all that all right as we read in isaiah 66 earlier you know the lord is coming back with fire as a whirlwind with his chariots all right so this is ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30 it says therefore i will judge you o house of israel everyone according to his ways said the lord yahweh by shimei repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be a ruin all right you know so you israelites that don't want to repent you know iniquity is going to be your ruin all right you know the only way to be saved out of these times to come is repentance, all right? You know, you have people that think that, you know, stocking up, you know, uh, stocking up on food, weapons and all that is gonna help. You know, it's not. You know, while all this stuff is cool, you know, but if you haven't repented and changed your ways, hey, you're done, bro, you're done. So let's continue. Verse 31, cast away from all you your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel, right? You know, and as I just read in the book of Ephesians, you know, you have to put on a new man, all right? You know, you have to think differently, all right? It's, the same, it's saying the same thing, you know, because if you don't, ultimately you're gonna die in these last days, all right? That's why the scripture just says, why will ye die, O house of Israel? You know, letting you know that if you don't repent, you know, if you don't have a change of heart, meaning a change of mind, hey, you're going to die in these last days, all right? Be it Jacob's trouble or the ultimate judgment, you know, World War III, you know, nukes dropping on this place. Verse 32, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, said the Lord Yahweh, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye, all right? So, hey, this is what, you know, you're supposed to do if you want to live, you're supposed to repent, you know? You know, the scriptures talk, tell you to, you know, uh, keep the commandments and live, roughly paraphrasing. I'm going to get that in a few, you know. Let's continue. Uh, I believe that was that in uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. Now I want to jump to the book of Zechariah chapter 13, all right? You know, very popular scripture that always gets brought out, you know. But, hey, it's certain brothers and su certain sisters that are new to these channels that may not know. So we're going to continue to bring these scriptures out. You know over and over again all right so this is uh zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8 and it says and it shall come to pass that in the land saith the lord two parts therein shall be cut off and die and the third shall be left therein all right you know as we read in second edges chapter 9 you know it's talking about how you know it's going to be many more that perish than those that be saved from paraphrasing all right you know this is saying the same thing verse uh, 9 and it says, and I will bring the third part through the fire and we will find them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say as my people 
and they shall say, the Lord is my power. All right. So hey, that's the importance of repenting, you know, so that you don't find yourself being one of these two thirds that's going to be cut off in, the, in this land. All right. You know, the, the type of judgment that's getting ready to come to this earth, you know, it's going to be a judgment that the world has never seen before. All right. You know, Jacob's trouble, you know, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7, it, it tells you that Jacob's trouble is going to be a time like the earth has never seen before. All right. The worst time in history. All right. So that lets you know the type of judgment that's going to be coming upon this earth. All right. You know. So uh, from here, I want to get second Andrew chapter seven. All right. So lock it. All right, Second Andrew chapter 7, and we're going to start at verse 20. And it says, For there be that be many that perish in this life, because they despise the law of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, that is set before him. All right? You know, many more perish in this life, you know, because they didn't want to keep the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They did not want to repent, so on and so forth. All right? Verse 21. For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai hath given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. All right. So basically, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has given us, you know, the blueprint. What's up, man? You know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has given us the blueprint, you know, of what we should do to live, you know, what, you know, what, uh, and you know how to live, yeah, how what we should do to live. All right. Let's read that again. For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai hath given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should do to, to uh, what they should observe to avoid punishment. All right, you know. So we have the blueprint. All right, you know. And it, it, we was told back in the uh, Second Ezra chapter nine. All right, if you want to be saved from the things that's coming, you know, you got to keep the faith and have works. All right. Verse twenty-two. Nevertheless. They were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things. All right. You know, when you look at our people, you know, they speak against the Lord. They mock. They don't want to listen. You know, they speak a bunch of vain things. All right. It's like they imagine vain things. Verse 23. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said the most high that is not. It's like that he is not and knew not his ways. Verse 24. But his law have they despised and they denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works all right so ultimately you know that's ultimately why you see our people in this low condition you know because we didn't keep the keep the law statutes and commandments all right you know you know and, and then this time that we're living in right now for you Israelites that still don't want to repent all right you know the Lord he's going to destroy you and Jacob's trouble all right, you know, in the ultimate judgment in uh, uh, World War Three. All right, so this joint this leads me to uh, Proverbs chapter seven and verse two, and this tells you that you know keep the commandments and live. All right, Proverbs chapter seven and verse two, and it says, "Keep my commandments and live, and my law is the apple of thy eye." All right, you know, so hey, this is how you live, keeping the law, statutes, commandments. You know, to the best of your ability, of course, you know, because we're in this captivity of certain things that, you know, we cannot do, you know, so on and so forth. So we got to keep the law of statutes commands to the best of our ability. All right. You know, Judges chapter five and verse 11, it says rehearse the righteous acts, you know. So, hey, this is how we live, you know, by having faith, you know, having the works, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability. All right. Verse, uh, it's a lot. That was that on that. So now I want to jump to uh, Revelation chapter three, all right? You know, dealing with the hour of temptation, you know, because, you know, Yahweh Bashim al Shah has been a bring, you know, one last judgment, you know, upon your Israelites, all right? You know, you know, your Israelites that don't want to repent, you know, the times that we're coming into is ultimately to sift out the wicked of our people, all right? You know, so this is uh, Revelation chapter three and verse 10. And it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. 
all right? You know, and these are times that we're coming into, all right? The hour of temptation, all right? You know, we're coming into a time where Esau, Edom, you know, the so-called white man, right? You know, he's getting ready to come down with great wrath, you know? He's gonna come down with great wrath and force his, uh, you know, his, uh, his system on people, all right? You know, he's gonna persecute the Israelites. You know, he's gonna try to force, you know, this MLTB on people, you know, certain, so on and so forth, all right? And as we just read, it's gonna come upon the whole earth. You know, so there's nowhere that you can flee to to try to escape the judgment that's coming, all right? If you're destined for judgment, you're gonna get judgment. If you're destined for salvation, you're gonna get salvation, all right? So, this is uh, Salaki, Revelation chapter 12. In verse 12 and it says therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time all right you know and this these are the times that we're living in you know esau edom you know so-called white man the devil that the bible speaks of is getting ready to come down with great wrath all right you know he's getting ready to come down with great wrath on you israelites all right uh, uh, mass persecution is going to be taking place in these last days. You know, when you read the book of Second Nature, chapter 16, you know, it tells you that, you know, those that fear the Lord, you know, is going to be cast out of their houses, you know, roughly paraphrasing, all right? You know, so this is the time that we're living in, you know, very harsh and troublesome times. And these times, like I said, is basically, you know, to sift out, you know, the two thirds, all right? Because the elect is going to endure through all these things that's coming, all right? You know, the elect is going to uh, make it through these uh, trials and tribulations, all right? And ultimately, the elect is not going to fold under pressure to Esau Edom's system, all right? So this is uh, Second Edges, chapter 16. And let's start at verse 68, all right? And it says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. So like, let's read that again. All right. It says, "For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you, and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols." All right. You know, and that's talking about the MOTB, things offered unto idols. That's talking about the MOTB, the microchip. All right. You know, but point being, it says they shall take certain of you and feed you being idle. All right, the scriptures tell you that, you know, some of us are going to be cast into these, uh, you know, these camps, all right? You know, these uh, prisons, all right, which is these so-called uh, FEMA camps and whatnot, all right? Let me see if I can get that. So this is Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. And it says, For none of those things which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. All right? So, hey, going back to Second Edges chapter 16, it says they shall uh, take certain of you, being idle and feed you with things offered unto idols. All right? A lot of these people, you know, a lot of you Israelites, you know, are going to be taken... You know, cast into these prisons. You know, they're gonna tempt you. You know, we're taking this MOTB. You know, so on and so forth. All right. You know, but as we just says, you know, fear not these things that thou shalt suffer. All right. You know, it says that you may be tried, you shall have tribulation ten days, but be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. All right. So no matter what, Salaki. Hopefully, y'all still heard me. You know, my, uh, this phone is getting ready to die and whatnot, you know, but going back to what I was just saying, you know, we're coming into a time where, you know, they're going to take a lot of Israelites and cast you into these prisons. All right. You know, but as we just read in Revelation chapter two, you know, it says, be thou faithful unto death and you'll get a crown of life. All right. You know, so, uh, going back to second Andrew chapter 16. Now let's read verse 68 again, all right? And it says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude 
is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you feet and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. Verse 69. And they shall and they that consent unto them shall be held in derision and in reproach and tried it under and be trodden underfoot. Alright? So hey, if you take this mark, you know, if you fold up under under pressure, you know, when they take you, they cast you into these prisons, all right? You consent to taking the MOTB, all right? The scripture just says that you shall be had in derision and in reproach, and you'll be trodden underfoot, all right? So hey, you know, you may think that taking this MOTB, you know, is gonna be good, but eventually you go, you're still gonna get put to death, all right? You know? So let's continue. Verse 70, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, all right? You know, great insurrection, you know, is getting ready to come upon this place, all right? You know, you Israelites, you're going to be targeted, persecuted, all right? You know, they persecuted Yahweh Shah back then. You know, they, they persecuted the prophets of the old, you know, the disciples, so on and so forth. You know, so how much more us, all right? You know? Salaki. So when you read the definition, you know, this word insurrection on uh, Google, it says a violent uprising against an authority or government, all right? You know, and as we just read, it says there's to be an insurrection, you know, upon those that fear the Lord, all right? The Israelites, all right? You know, so the Israelites, you know, starting with 144,000 men, you know, the prophets, you know, there's gonna be a great insurrection among them, all right? You know? Because the prophets, the 144,000, is ultimately going to be that government. All right? Let's continue. Verse 71. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. All right? You know, so to you people that try to say that, you know, you, you Christians specifically, you know, you Christians try to say that, you know, those that's of the elect, you know, those that's of the chosen, you know, they're not going to have to experience these things, right? Because the pre the pre tribulation rapture, you know, that pre tribulation rapture doctrine is bullshit, all right? As we just read, even those that fear the Lord is going to be catching hell, all right? Let's continue. Verse 73 Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire, all right? You know, so even the elect. You know it's going to be tried as gold in the fire but the thing about this is that the, the elect is going to make it out all right the elect is going to survive these things all right you know but you two-thirds Israelites Lord willing we're not of that number you know but you Israelites that's of the two-thirds that don't want to repent you know guess what all right this is what's coming to you all right you know you're going to be uh destroyed in these last days so lucky I got thrown off check a little bit uh Yeah, you know, it's verse 73, even the elect, you know, is going to be tried, you know, the, the elect is going to survive, you know, but those that's not the elect, you know, you're going to perish, you know, in many different ways, all right, you know, whether it be uh, from famine, pestilences, uh, sedition among men, race wars, all right, World War Three, all right, you know, getting drafted over into World War Three because that's coming too, you know, a draft is coming. You know, that's why the scriptures tell you that the virgin shall mourn having no helpers. In uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 16, I believe it's uh, around the 30th verse, all right? You know, it tells you that, you know, virgin shall mourn having no helpers, you know? And because the men, they're going to perish, you know, from the wars and of the famines, all right? You know, verse, um, verse 74, and it says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, said the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. All right? You know, saying the same thing that we read about in Jeremiah chapter 30 and uh, verse 7. You know, you know, Jeremiah chapter 37 it talks about a, a time of trouble like never before. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. 
It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right? You know, going back to what we just read, saying the same thing. All right? The elect of Jacob is going to be saved out of it. All right? So let's read 74 again. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. All right? The Lord is going to deliver the elect. All right? You know? Because that's, yeah, even in the book of Matthew, uh, it says that Yahweh Shah is coming to deliver his elect, all right? So all, the, all of Israel is not going to be delivered. You know, those that's of the two-thirds, you know, you're going to perish in these times to come, all right? Verse 75. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is your God, all right? You know, you cannot be in that doubt, doubtful spirit, you know, because if you're having that doubtful spirit in these times to come, that ultimately, that ultimately means that you're lacking faith, all right? And the scriptures tell you that, you know, the, the just is going to live by faith, all right? You know, it says that we're going to be saved by faith, all right? So if you don't have faith, how do you expect to be saved in these times to come, all right? You got to have faith that Yahweh Bashim al Shah is going to be your guide, all right? Verse 76, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, all right? You know, you have to keep the commandments. Right, all the things that you, that the Lord commanded you to do, right? Even going back to the uh, law, statutes, commandments, you know that was given to us, right? You know everything that was commanded of us to do, we got to do it, right? Said the Lord Yahweh, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up your up themselves, all right? So hey, you know we're, we're in a time where we're not supposed to let our iniquities and our sins weigh us down. All right? So lucky. It's a verse that I'm looking for. All right, verse 77. All right, that's what I'm looking for. And it says, it said, woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities. Like as a field is covered with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through, all right? You know, so hey, if you caught out there, you know, when all hell break loose, you know, you caught out there in the midst of sin, doing wickedness, hey, you're gonna be destroyed, all right? So going back to what I said earlier, that's the importance of repenting, all right? You know, the scriptures tell you that all the sinners of the Lord's people are going to die by the sword. All right. So let me go ahead and get that. This is Amos chapter nine, and let's start at verse nine. And it says, "For lo, I will command, and I will sift out. It's so like I will sift the the house of Israel from among all nations. All right. You know, and this is the time that we're coming into. Yahweh Shemuel Shai is getting ready to deliver us out of all nations where we were scattered." All right, like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All right, so going back to what I said earlier, you know, if you're of the elect, you know, you're going to get salvation. All right, you know, it says the least grain shall not fall upon the earth. You know, now verse 10 is the point, and it says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. All right. You know, so hey, if you're in the, in the midst of sin when all hell's breaking loose, all right, you know, hey, the Lord is going to kill you, all right? All the sinners of the Lord, people are going to die by the sword. So hey, don't put off, you know, repenting to another day, you know, because judgment could, run, or could, could rain upon you at any time, all right? You know, we are in those times, you know, and the vast majority of our people, they don't see it, you know, they don't want to see it, you know? And ultimately, that's going to lead to their destruction. You know, title of this lesson, Jacob's Trouble is the Only Remedy. All right? So I'm end off with uh, this. Psalms chapter 17 and verse 13, all right? And it says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. All right? You know, who is the wicked? You know, when you read the book of Malachi, uh, the Malachi chapter 1, you know, it tells you that Esau is the border of all wickedness, all right? You know, so the Esau, even the so-called white man, all right? He's the wicked that the Bible speaks of, 
you know? So let's read that again. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, all right? Which is thy sword, you know? And, you know, all throughout history, Yahweh Bashim al Shai has used other nations to punish us, all right, when we go off, all right? So in this time that we're in right now, Yahweh Bashim al Shai is going to use Esau Edom, all right, the wicked, which is his sword, all right? You know, to punish you Israelites, all right? You know? So we're supposed to be in the mentality that, uh, like what Psalm 17 just said, Psalm 17 verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, and deliver my soul from the wicked. All right? You know, we want Yahweh by Shemiah al Shah to deliver us from the wicked in these in signs that we're coming into. All right? You know? So, hey, you know, Jacob's trouble, you know, it's the only remedy for you Israelites that don't want to repent. All right? You know, it's the only, it's the only, it's the only remedy. All right? You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a saying out there that, you know, experience, you know, is the best teacher, all right? So a lot of you Israelites, you know, you're gonna have to experience the things that brothers have been saying, you know, is gonna come, come to pass for a very long time, all right? You're gonna have to experience these things because you don't wanna believe it beforehand. So you're gonna have to experience it to, to believe it. And it's gonna be too late at that point, all right? So, you know, with that, you know, Lord willing, Lord willing you know, this lesson was edifying to you brothers and you sisters out there scattered to the four corners of the earth. And as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.